so here we are for the podcast empowering women in construction and I am absolutely delighted and I can say ecstatic about having Paulette Watson with us founder CEO trailblazer amazing woman (laughs) of Academy Achievers so um Paulette would you like to just introduce yourself briefly for us Absolutely. Hi, Georgina. It's a pleasure to be on your platform and speaking to you. Um, I I am honoured, literally. And as you already said, me, I'm Paula Watson and I'm the global tech disruptor. And um, I have literally set up Academy Achievers about 20 odd years ago, working with children and young people from disaffected, disadvantaged and vulnerable, who are vulnerable and come from, experience real trauma and come from marginalized communities. And we specialize in science, technology, engineering and maths. But the reason why we, we set up Academy Achievers really was, you know, when I was living in Lewisham at the time, you know, with my daughter, I was looking at the, the demographics and it was around white working class boys and Afro-Caribbean boys as well. And looking at how do we raise the aspiration level. And, um, but as time went by, Things were changing, you know, the world is evolving, and then it became looking at issues around gang related violence. And then we decided that we're not going to just teach, you know, math and English what they teach at school, we're going to try and diversify it, meaning get the, um, the coding involved, make it fun, make it innovative, get the young people to think outside the box. And then when we started to do our project, especially the STEM robotic project. It, we had a lot of boys coming, there was no girls. So that came, the Be Me project came about to raise one million black girls aspiration in science, technology, engineering, and maths um, related careers. And we, we really wanted to get everybody involved and include everyone. But when we started to look at the data, Georgina, we said, no, nah, you know, you know, young girls, young Bane girls, black girls, BME girls, they are at the bottom of the pile. So the BME project really aims to diversify, you know, the tech industry, but on so many different levels, which I'll explain a lot um, later on in our talk, in our conversation. Oh, what a great intro. And I love that you are a disruptor. You know, you're not here to play games. <laughs> you're here to, to really make change. And Paula, it's so nice to speak to you because we met, how long has it been now? About three years? Yeah, 2019, we met in April, we went on our tour. Yeah, yeah we did. Which, and, and I was so inspired. I mean, obviously I had no idea that you were on, on different levels, <laughs> you know, at that point because we had just met, but I was so inspired even then hearing about your project. And I was like, this is a lady to watch out for. And I will say that watching you, you have completely exploded and, Every time I see something, I'm like, wow, yes. And I'm just always rooting for you. So it's been great to hear um, about the journey and the fact that it's been 20 years. Wow. And, you you know, look at what you've achieved. Um, so, So we are here talking about empowering women in construction. And you spoke specifically about the fact that there weren't many women that were coming to, you know, what you were offering. So... Could you tell me why you believe there's that kind of disparity between kind of this, you know, looking at kind of tech and and construction, certain sort of industries and why women don't necessarily go forward or or young girls even go forward for these roles? What did you think were some of those things? Well, it's interesting that you asked me, really. Um, There's a lot of there's a lot of um, things that we need to, 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 to unpack. Okay, so when we talk about you know, why why the disparity and what is the problem? And let me just give you some data. I'm currently writing a book, so I'm just drawing the information from the book that I'm writing. Of course you are, of course you are, Paulette. I mean, come on now. (laughs) So the problem is that the 6.2% of UK domicile students enrolled into STEM, yeah, related subjects at university. And these young people are black, 4.8% are black African, 1.2% are black Caribbean, and 0.2% other, yeah? And black girls, literally, um, they, they do well at the school level in terms of the, um, the science subjects, but something happens when they get to university. And that's a whole conversation that 
we can explore. Really, it's, it's so big, but I'm looking at that in our books in terms of looking at cultural differences, looking at where the where the university is, um, the jobs that are available within those different campus, and how it impacts on, on you know young people. Um, in 2019, about 249,000 women working in the UK technology accounted for only 70% of IT specialists in the region, and a figure which has only grown literally by 1% in Georgina over the past five years. Yeah, and again in 2019, 268,000 Black, Asian, and minority BAME IT specialists in the UK accounted for only 18% of IT workers, a number that has increased by only 2% over the past five years from 16% in 2015. Around 8% of IT specialists are of Indian ethnicity, 2% from a Black, African Caribbean, or Black British background, and 2% from Pakistani or Bangladesh background. Gaps in degrees, girls are less likely to take up STEM subjects. Employment gaps, these are the problems. Retention gaps, workplace cultural issues, lack of representation, lack of role models, pay gaps for women in tech, leadership position gap. And as you know, the COVID-19 pandemic has affected, has affected mostly vain women, especially in the tech industry. So with all these issues, you know, and young women, black women, not having the opportunity to see women within these particular roles. As far as they're concerned, it's non-existent. But yet still, according to McKenzie's um, report in 2018, uh, can I remember the name? But they said that diversifying, um, having women on your board, yeah? That creates a talent, a pool of talent, right? And it could raise, I mean, your, the economy in terms of raising your organization, make, making money, being sustainable, having women on your leadership team or within your organization at the cutting edge will bring your organization to the, allow it to be sustainable basically. And there's a talent pool that the government is literally missing out. And when I say black, I, I don't want to exclude anybody. I really don't. Um, it's just that there is a problem. There is a real problem. And I want to bring that, I want to highlight that. But gender and diversity is a big issue. And I want to make that very, 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 very clear. But when you look at the data, yeah, I remember I was at an event and um, the Rose Review and Rose was speaking about the lack of women in entrepreneurialism, um, entrepreneurship in, lead, in those positions. You're talking about um, the uh, FTSE 100 that literally there was 1% women or there was zero. And I'm looking at her and I'm listening to her and I'm thinking, okay, right, okay, she's talking. And so that's, that's that for women. And she's talking about how many women are in the UK. And it's just saying 5% of women are in these, in these positions or in the different sectors at leadership role. I think, so what is the percentage for BAME women? I thought, hold on a minute. Then she said 3%. I said, well, what's the position for people that looks like me? She was saying 1%. So when I started to break down STEM, science, technology, engineering, maths, and I thought, well, let's break it. Well, who are the women in science? Who are the women in technology? And I looked at engineering, literally in Newham, when I looked at The Apprentice, so in Newham, they have like a, like a statistic on the different um, roles or different sectors that young people go. I looked under engineering, the apprentice, and it was zero. I looked under science, it was 4%. When I looked under the BAME and the Black, it was non-existent. It's unacceptable, something needs to be done. So then I started to speak to, talk to parents. So throughout COVID, we had like monthly sessions with parents, but I started to introduce the new and emerging technology. And they were saying like, what is AI? What is artificial intelligence? What is genomics? What is um, 5G? What is the internet of things? What's big data? And like, what's um, quantum computing? They were asking these questions. They were like saying, Paul, we don't understand. I said, I said, you know what? You're allowed to get it wrong. It's fine. It's fine. You, you wouldn't understand. But we've been doing these parents' workshops for the last what, 18 months. Now parents are like saying, okay, we know what AI, we know what the tools are, we understand about facial recognition, speech recognition, they understand what machine learning is, natural process and language are. And like, this all started from a conversation. So in answer to your question, Georgina, the reason why there are gaps is, if a group of people has been consistently excluded, there's no role models, yeah? The young person's parent has been treated unfairly at work, 
there's so much microaggressions going on. I mean, by the time you come home, who's got time to be talking about or want to even know what's happening outside the world? You just want to be at home, be by yourself. So it's a cultural aspect that we need to understand as well as a psychological issue that we really need to put together. And there's a term um, Kimberly Kristoff talks about um, intersectionality, where she talks about, you know, in terms of, it's not just being a woman, but you've got to think about our race, our disability, our cultural experience. And as a black woman, we've got all those disadvantages that we have to believe it through. There's no way we're going to be able to have that mindset to be able to want to get into those jobs. So that's why the Be Me program does not just only look at training in HTML, CSS, Python, JavaScript, and now we've introduced um, cryptocurrency, just to, you know, explain what it is, blockchains, non-fungible tokens, bitcoins, the difference between coins and tokens, just to set black women, women on hold, let them understand that having financial literacy, but using the technology to be innovative and to create and, you know, and solve problems. So it's just equipping our young people to, to be digitally equipped for a future that's going to be, come on, think about the metaverse, you know, virtual reality and what does that mean and how, the, how are they going to navigate? So going, talking about the construction industry, we do need that talent and having women in those fields, it's going to be epic because remember, I'm based in Africa at the moment and literally it's women that are the ones that are running the home, even when they go out to the farm and they're cooking and how they're cooking, it all involves science. It's just, it's just amazing and it's outstanding. Without women, mm, I don't think this world would be able to operate. And I'm not even, I'm being dead serious. Without us, it, it would be a very sad place to be. And I think we do need to recognize women and their hard work and their contribution because I believe we do a lot. Can you imagine when it's coupled with the digital tech or can you imagine how far we can go? And we've got to think about climate change and so much that we can do. We can create and, and think about these tools. We're very creative. We can localize our experiences culturally. There's so much that we, we, we really can offer. Absolutely. I mean, you covered so much there, you know, and but it's really great because the things that were standing out to me is first and foremost thinking about okay we're speaking about women in construction but let's let's keep it real you know because actually it's not just the disparity against male and female it's actually looking at being a, a woman of color being black and mm -hmm. and how that actually affect affects the access that you have and the opportunities or maybe even just the way that you see things to think about having access to these roles and, and, and in these sort of industries and how that has to change. And that's really major. Um, and there's so there's so much more. And what I love is when you speak about the when you spoke about the McKinsey, the McKinsey report um, yes. and specifically around that that report, Diversity Wins, which we've really digested and unpacked and 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 it's looking at gender, but it's actually yeah. saying so, you know, if you if you have um you know, a, a mixed gender on your leadership team that you'll actually be 24% more successful. But actually, if you have diversity of kind of cultures and races, you're actually 36% more successful. So the evidence is there, right? Um, and, you know, I will also say that I salute you, Paulette, for being in that position and being that representation. And, you know, we're both entrepreneurs, right? And one of the things that we've that, that you've just mentioned and that one of the things that have always come out is that we need to see more people like us. Yeah, I agree. In these positions. And we've kind of taken that step and, and we've been able to do what we, what we do. But I'll say this. I'll ask you this question, Paulette. What is it that has enabled you to, I guess, go against all odds and just be out there and just thrive and shine and continue to you know be disruptive in that space well oh, that could oh so much well for me um my father died in 2019 and he was a great um just just someone that was my he was my role model he was an engineer he was very good at math and he was always in my life to the day he died and that was for me heartbreaking but he would always say to me, he always called me a teacher. He always felt that I was knowledgeable. And he would always tell me, he would see me working, but 
that was because of him. And he would always say that once there's breath, there's life. And I remember the day he died and I had to um, lead a robotic project that we've been successful every year since. And I dedicated to my dad every January. And as my daughter be more, but as he was there laying and I realized that that had been the end of the road for him. But I knew that if he was still breathing, he would have been, he would have got up and he would have gone. And I said, you know what? Dad would have said, keep going. Those young people need you. And I was able to leave and go and support those young people. And following from that, supporting those young people, because I didn't tell them at the time, I told them after, they were looking at that, Miss, you're crazy. You came, your dad just died and you came to support us. And I said, that is real, you're passionate about us. You want us to see us succeed. And then they won, they went on to winning the championship and they were like, Miss, but you sacrificed, not spent. I said, well, I knew my dad would have said, life you guys are here and you you guys are the future so it's about me being I'm passionate about young people um Georgina to the point where they are the future of tomorrow and we need to create a legacy and because my dad created a legacy in me his grandchildren he's able to live on through us and according to the world economic forum there's going to be 55 billion um AI robotic automated jobs okay if we don't support our young people, offer them training, they're going to be displaced, okay? But it's not going to, ha- it's going to have a ripple effect on the economy, on all of us, if we don't do something now. And like I said, it's not just training them, but their mental health is a big issue, yeah? Because when you're losing your loved ones, and when life is going on, and you can't get a job, you can't pay your bills, you're sick, you can't, you're helpless, and you feel that there's nothing more you can do. But when you put things in place and you can see people around you that care, when people talk about the Be Me project, they talk about Paulette, well, you know what? I know that Paulette's gonna say a, a nugget. I always try to give them a word of affirmation and you know, just to encourage people. But I think it's important that people feel, what's that word, you know, loved, you know, feel welcome, feel that, you know, they can do it. And I always told the young people that failure only occurs when you give up. So they were allowed to fail around me because that's why I see the gaps. So for me, it's seeing young people just doing well, even, even when they are, they fail, when they fall in their face, but seeing them get up. It's about having that growth mindset. It's looking at, you know, although I did it, I went down road A, it wasn't the right road, but let me try road B. And let me see how I can do it better the next time. So having the right people around is creating a cultural capital, having correct people that you know that can support you, yeah? During, you know, when you're, like, when you're walking through life or you're getting through life, it's, it's, not, it's not a one-man band. You can't work in silos. So for me, I have a lot of good friends. I have a good family network. And yeah, I have my mentor and I have my coach and... Yeah, life is good, life is good. And I really want to ensure that I'm able to showcase that to those people around me, whether it's face-to-face, whether it's virtually, whether I I give a talk of inspiration, whatever I do, I want to make sure that I leave something that will empower them to to move forward. Excellent, you do such a a great job. And it was so refreshing to hear about your, your father. It actually made me feel a little bit emotional because as soon as you started speaking about him I could just hear this word legacy you know and it's 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 incredible to know that someone has impacted your life so much that he's empowered you to continue to empower others who in turn will empower others and it's kind of it just sets this kind of thing in motion um and and the fact that you you work with people that you allow them to fail I I feel like I want to do one of your courses, one of your programs. Can I can I join? Because absolutely. <laughs> now you can come and be the woman to come and talk to them because you you are inspirational. So we need you to be the one to come and talk and inspire. Oh, that's so funny. You see, I the thing what I love is I, I love to talk to people, but I also just love to be in places where I feel empowered and I feel that I can. And that's what it, you know, that's what the Be Me project is. Um, it's absolutely fantastic and I think it's definitely plugging 
a massive, massive gap. And it's, in, it's inspiring to know that you are out there, you are making that happen. And all of these women will have such a testimony of what they've been able to achieve through coming into contact with this program. So it's brilliant. Um, I'll ask you this question and then I'll have just one more because I think I could probably talk to you for like for the whole day, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know if, we, if we'd ever stop. Um, no. But what do you think? So you've spoken about how you've been able to kind of empower, you know, these, these young, young women and, and, and enable them to start thinking differently about their career choices and, and, and thinking about some of those gaps. What would you say to organisations um, that, that, you know, are thinking about bringing more diversity into their workplaces? What could they do to make it a bit more accessible for women and women of colour? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, personally, I think that the fact that they're, um, it's, it's about the, the recruitment process, how they're getting their young people in, or the young ladies or the, the women, but also how are they going to retain them? So understanding, you know, for example, I remember I used to work in a school, this is years ago, and um, it was based in a Muslim community. And what the school did, which I thought, I thought was amazing, just something basic, going to the toilet, they had, you know, the, um, like a jug for each toilet, and they took into consideration their cultural needs, you know? And, I, I just, and for me, I was like, Wow, something as simple as that. And when I was, when we were working in our organization in the schools, that's what we did. We had a couple of young women who were Muslim ladies and they needed to pray. So what we did when we were doing our schedules, we um, incorporated prayer time. Okay. And what we found was that we knew that every morning between 10.45 to 12, yeah, they would need to go and have that time to, to break to have a prayer and we didn't stress them out and they could just go whenever they felt like they had a room, we provided them that. And what that did, that helped to increase the morale of my staff. They were committed, they were on time. They felt comfortable because they felt that they, if there was an issue, they could come and speak to us. And for me, for organizations, corporate organizations, tech organization, it's about your staff. It's about having a really, um, a staff that where they feel comfortable, where they can come and talk to you. There needs to be people on your leadership team, but that looks like us, okay? Definitely, because like you said, you know, with all these different cultural background and some people may see things differently, differently, it's about having tolerance, okay? Um, because what I've noticed sometimes when it's just a, it's a one glove fit all, it doesn't work, it really doesn't work. And especially for women, some women have issues in regard to childcare issues. Some women have issues where, you know, they need to get home at a particular time or religion issues. There's so much things that having those different types of people on your board, they could say, well, actually, the reason why this person may be late or they might be going through is because if they're a single parent mother, these are the challenges. And then it will, you put it on the table and then you'll be able to look at things differently and you don't personalize it. it's about using emotional intelligence when you're dealing with particular particular issues so what i'm telling currently i'm working with a, a global software organization and i'm literally just telling them my truth and can you imagine me a black woman at that single parent mother and i'm just telling them this how it was like i've just handed my notice to um a, a, a um, an organization stepping down from being the um a governor not governor director and they're like, why are you going? We don't want you to go. And I'm like, well, I just feel, I don't feel that I'm being recognized for all the stuff that I'm doing. I don't feel I have a voice, but now they're willing to listen to me. And that to me shows progress, right? So they must, they must really see what I'm doing online. Yeah, they see that I'm a disruptor. They see that I'm leading in the tech industry and they're taking that into consideration and they're showing that they, they value me. So with that approach and making people feel or including people, people are gonna to wanna to stay. They wanna give their all and their time. Because remember your time is, is the most valid commodity and people need to feel valued. So valued. So tech companies, industry, you have to make people, whether they're women, whether they're male, whether they, of people of color, whatever it is, we need to feel valued, 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 especially when it comes to our time. So 
Get us involved with the planning um, process. Get us involved. Hear what we have to say. Whether it may seem trivial, whatever, let us talk. Give us a voice and let us be seated at the table. Let us be the co-designers because it works. It really, 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 I love to see that, especially when we're doing our project for our young people, the BME project. We've got a Digitech team with young girls and they're the ones that say, well, this is what we want. This is what we don't want. And literally when we do what they want, the courses are full, absolutely. So I don't get involved no more. What do you want guys? Tell me, this is the budget and they tell us and they bring their friends. So tech companies, any corporations, if you listen to your staff, you one, you'll improve the morale. Two, people will be more committed. Three, you will see the, um, the work production, it will increase tenfold. Yeah, and you see there'll be a return on, the, on your, on, be a return on your investment. Yeah, I don't think I could have said it any better <laughs> than the way that you wrap that up. Yeah. And one of the things that I really liked in terms of what you said is just actually making sure that you retain staff. So it's not just about getting them through the door. It's how you retain them. So some really, really good tips there. Um, and last but not least, I know that you're a busy lady, <laughs> so I'm going to try and wrap this up. Um, but where do you see yourself in, say, the next five years? Where's Paulette in five years? Oh, wow. Very good question. I see myself in the mountains. I love the mountains. I used to live in Switzerland in the Alps and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So anywhere in Africa on the mountains, just living life like it's golden. That's it. Lovely. Like that sounds absolutely bliss. And I'm sure everything else will be happening in the background, but you'll just be having your tranquil time in the mountains. Yes, I need it. I do. Yes, do just that. make sure you, you send me an invitation. I'll be yes. there with you. <laughs> absolutely. We should. I will. I will. Definitely. I'll oh, bless uh, you. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure to um, have this short conversation with you. And we definitely need to speak some more um, because we need to stay, you know, in tune with what's happening in the world, in, in your world um, and in your life. It's, it's fantastic. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, Georgina. It's been a pleasure. And thank you to everyone else who's listening. It's going to be awesome.